Senior Plasma Physics, Lecture 9. We're now going to revisit electron and ion oscillations in a plasma, but this time in the presence of a magnetic field. The oscillations are going to be perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field. Then we're going to leave the oscillation of particles in a plasma behind and look at the dispersion relation of electromagnetic waves passing through a plasma. We'll pick on the simplest case where the applied magnetic field is zero. Let the electrons and ions oscillate in a direction that's perpendicular to an applied magnetic field. In order to get expressions for the angular frequencies, we need to make some very familiar assumptions. That is, the ions and electrons are cold. That the steady state density and the applied magnetic field are constant and that an unperturbed plasma has an electric field of zero because it is regarded as a neutral medium. Then we go through the same process that we went through to obtain expressions for the plasma frequency by linearizing the fluid equations and Poisson's equation. An image of the physics is this, where the wavefront of the oscillation is in the same direction as the oscillating electric field, E1. But the direction of travel is at right angles to an applied magnetic field, B0. For a full derivation using the above assumptions, see sections 4.9 and 4.10 of Chin. We finally arrive at the following frequencies. The electrons have this relationship for the angular frequency, which is a combination of the plasma frequency and the electron cyclotron frequency. This is called the upper hybrid frequency. If you want to imagine how this motion looks like, it is both a combination of the longitudinal oscillations associated with a plasma frequency combined with the gyrations of electron cyclotron motion. But it's important to note that there is no wave vector k in this expression. That is, there's no traveling wave, it's simply an oscillation, just as the plasma frequency was associated with an oscillation without wave travel, this is doing the same thing, with a slightly more complicated motion of its electrons. The ions have the following expression for the angular frequency, where capital omega is the ion cyclotron frequency. And Vs is given by this expression, which depends on the electron temperature. But what you'll notice about this expression is it contains the wave number k, which means that you can obtain a phase and a group velocity. This is a traveling wave, and therefore this relationship is a dispersion relation. Let's now look at the behavior of electromagnetic waves as they pass through a plasma. We'll consider the simplest case where the applied magnetic field is zero. Our main aim here is to obtain the dispersion relation of the electromagnetic wave. We'll assume that the wave is traveling along the z-axis with its electric field vector along the x-axis and the magnetic field vector along the y. Again, here we'll assume that the electrons and ions are cold, for simplicity. Because we are dealing with electromagnetic waves, this time we have to use Maxwell's equations, in particular these two equations, where the J here is the current density and is given by this expression. The current here is being carried by the electrons, so the velocity in the expression for current density, VE1, is that of the electrons. We'll assume that we have a purely sinusoidal wave, so the amplitudes of the electric and magnetic fields are controlled by these two functions. Notice that these two waves move along the z-axis, so that k is parallel to z. We also need to recall the equation of motion for electrons. Now we need to use all of the above equations to come up with the dispersion relation. The details of how all these equations are manipulated is given in Chen, section 4.12. The dispersion relation ends up being of this form, where omega p is the plasma angular frequency and c is the speed of light. 
Let's plot this dispersion relation and look at a couple of interesting features. Notice that the curve asymptotes to the speed of light for very large k values, but what's interesting is that the phase velocity of the electromagnetic wave in the plasma is greater than the speed of light for any k value less than infinity. This shouldn't be alarming because it's okay to have a phase velocity greater than the speed of light because that carries no information and so does not violate one of the premises of special relativity. It's only that the group velocity can carry information and that certainly cannot be greater than the speed of light.